Hey guys, Kaltorak here. Today, I want to bring you my Alliance Leveling Guide for Phase 1 of Season of Discovery. I now have 5 tunes at 25, with more on the way. My druid is really close. I have leveled them all the same way, and there are some cons to this method. This leveling style that I use involves farming hyperspawns. While this is an insane experience per hour, you are missing out on a few things during the leveling process, such as scooping a majority of your runes or getting a bunch of reputation from quests. There are a few things you can most certainly do at 25, so it works out, but just wanted to throw that warning out there. Before we dive in, I want to point out two very important skips that I do. There's a skip from Manifold to Ironforge. I use this to get my Night Elf characters to Stormwind fast and safe. All you have to do is swim to this location, make sure to hug the right to avoid Murlocs. You then log out in the water here, and use the stuck feature on the Battle.net website. I will have it linked in the description. Once you use the stuck feature and log back in, your character will be in Ironforge. The other skip I do is to get my humans, gnomes, and dwarves to Menethil. I want these flight paths so I can easily get to Darnassus for the Boon world buff. I do almost all of my leveling with the world buff. It just makes everything so much easier. Make sure to be mindful of the Murloc and the Alligator when crossing this point. Now that you have easy flight path access to Darnassus for the world buff, we can begin leveling. This leveling method can be done with any class. I'll use my Druid as an example for now. The first thing you want to do is go after your most important runes. For Druid, you want Star Surge and Fury of Storm Rage. Sunfire is an okay pickup, but I have found myself using it very rarely, as it was just a waste of mana compared to just Blasting Wrath. For both of these runes, you are able to pick them up very early. I got them at level 2 and was able to solo both of them. You get the quest for Fury at level 2, and you can also get Star Surge at the same level. It was a painful run through Wetlands, but it makes the leveling process so much easier. As you can see here, some runes are just insane while leveling. For all of my alts, I try and find the most powerful runes I can get as early as possible. Here are a list of runes I have used while doing these hyperspawn farms. On Druid I get Star Surge and Fury of Storm Rage. On Priest, I get Void Plague and Homunculi. On Hunter, I get Beast Mastery and Explosive Shot. On Warrior, I get Victory Rush and Frenzied Assault. On Paladin, I get Seal of Martyrdom and Crusader Strike. On Mage, I get Living Flame, Regeneration, and Living Bomb. On Warlock, I get Master Channeler, Demonic Grace, and Haunt. On Rogue, unfortunately I believe they have some of the worst leveling runes. Most of their runes scale with weapon damage, which unless you are constantly tweaking yourself with good weapons, doesn't feel all that much better than regular Rogue. I've done most of my leveling with Saber Lash though. For all of these classes you can choose to go after more runes than this, or for other slots. These are the runes I have found the most important for each class while leveling 1 to 25. Be mindful, there are many locations you can get some runes from. A perfect example is the Rogue Saber Lash rune. For the human zone, you have to pickpocket a high level mob in Westfall. This is very hard to do at a low level, if not impossible. However, in Loch Modan, all you have to do is loot this box right here, and you get the rune. It doesn't matter what race you are playing, you can get a rune from any of the locations. Scout where you get the runes and which option is easiest to get. The sooner you get these runes, the better your level experience will be. Some runes like Warlock Master Channeler you can get early, but isn't usable until level 12 when you learn Drain Life. It's still very much worth grabbing once you can use it. I can already see some comments now. What about Shaman? What about Horde? Well, I haven't gotten around to playing Horde yet in Sod, nor do I know all the best hyperspawn locations. What I will do is recommend two people who I know that do. First would be my boy Spankers, another mage content creator. He has a lot of good leveling guides for mages that use a lot of great Horde hyperspawns. The other is Nohit Jerome. 
He has a fantastic core leveling guide on his YouTube channel. You can use a lot of the tips from this video, just apply it to their routes. You can find a link to both of their channels down below. Absolute legends. Okay, so you have your world buff and your runes sorted out. Now it's time for grinding. I always do this in the human zones. They have some fantastic hyper spawns that don't have much distance between themselves. I'll make sure to set my heart to either Stormwind, Goldshire, or Westfall in. This is for whenever I fly to Darnassus for the world buff, I can quickly hearth back and get into grinding. Whether you are AoEing or single targeting, these spots are great for all classes. Starting out, I always go to Northshire Abbey and Elwyn. Here I will farm Kobolds until level 3 in this location. Then I'll farm Bandits here until 6. After that, I will farm Boars at the McClure Vineyards until level 10. The great thing about these three locations is they are hyperspawn neutral mobs. This makes it incredibly safe for early levels, especially if you're choosing to get your powerful runes closer to 10. After that, I will farm the Murlocs here or here until level 13. At level 13, we are going to the beach in Westfall. You'll be farming crabs all the way till 24. At these locations, you will find hyperspawning crabs from level 13 to 14. I will stay at this location usually until 15 or 16. Then I'll go to the next set of crabs, which also happens to be level 15 or 16. I tend to avoid fighting mobs a higher level than me, because resist and misses hurt too much for the XP per hour. After farming the level 15 and 16 crabs until level 18, you guessed it, I make my way down to more crabs. These final groups of crabs are level 17 and 18. I will farm these bad boys all the way to 24 sometimes. Even when they are green at level 23, you are often able to chain pull and kill them so fast that it's still the best experience you can get. In general, for the 20 to 24 bracket, there are a lot of approaches you can take. At 24, I tend to just do a stockades run. All of the quests give amazing experience, as well as one of the stocks quests hooks you up with a fantastic starter ring. If you want to keep farming hyperspawns, I recommend the gnolls and wetlands at level 23 or 24. I find it usually best to start farming Prebus at 23. Usually by the time you do a full deadmines, SFK, and stockades, you will be 25. You can also choose to start farming your dungeon Prebus at level 20. Choose what you prefer, but I usually farm the crabs until 24 and then dungeon. Like I mentioned at the start of the video, leveling this way is extremely fast, but it leaves you with a lot of cleanup to do at 25. Whether that's farming your bis, working on professions, fixing your reputations, you'll have plenty to do at 25. I prefer it this way since everything is so much easier at max level, but remember you should play the game the way you find most enjoyable. There's a big trend going on right now in the classic scene where people are trying to police the way others play the game. Classic WoW is a wonderful game that brings in many different types of people and playstyles. Just because you enjoy the game one way doesn't mean someone else will enjoy it the same way. And that's okay. Find the way you enjoy WoW and rock with it. And I'll be doing the same over here, committing genocide versus crabs. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. If you watch this video the day it released, I'll be streaming later tonight. My guild will be doing a raid. Come check it out on YouTube. Hope you guys have a wonderful 2024. Take care.